All right, we'll go ahead and get started. I assume some people will roll in as we are going. Um, but the main thing we're going to do tonight is have our hacking team, who was competing in the Rocky Mountain Legion Cyber Defense Competition with Regan, and who came in second place, so congratulations to them. Uh, give us a rundown of kind of what went on in the competition, uh, what they, you know, what they had to deal with, things they could have done differently, things they learned, um, notes for next year's team, so we can watch this video then, just like you guys all watched the previous video now, maybe. Um, but also to give the people who weren't in the competition a chance to ask questions, to kind of get a feel for what went on in the competition in case you are interested in going next year or you're interested in other competitions like this. So there were seven teams in the competition. We came in second out of seven, so that's pretty good. Air Force won, like they have the last few years, but um, you know, it's pretty good that we can show up and come in second place without really the kind of prep that a lot of those teams have. Um, Air Force has a team that practices about 10 hours a week and does competitions, you know, a couple times a month. So they are in a slightly different caliber of competitor than we are. But um, it's pretty cool to come in second place against a bunch of other teams there. Especially a lot of these teams are some more specialized, but like IT, coming out of IT and security programs, there's more generalized CS programs. Um, so our team did very well. We're impressed with them. And now if they would come up and talk to us, I would be swell. Okay. Oh, yes. so, <laughs> and just FYI, the camera you know, cuts off like here and on that side of the table. So stay near the table and you're fine. And maybe start just by kind of, for those who weren't there, giving an overview of like how the competition was formatted and what you had to do. All right, okay, so it looks like this is well, most of our team. I guess Davis and Tony aren't here. So I'm not forgetting anyone. Um, so, um, sorry we don't have like a more like coherent presentation. Uh, it doesn't seem like us really have any time, but, um, but anyway, so the competition was basically formatted as such. Um, so, like, we were pretty much, like, put into a room. We had, like, four laptops for the eight of us, which was just awesome. And, and one MacBook, so that was even more awesome. So we were all fighting over, you know, who gets the MacBook and gets the Unix shell. Um, but anyway, the competition was structured such that when we went into this room, our pretty much, there was, like, this fake organization that we were acting as security consultants for. And, um, and so, basically, our goal was to keep all the resources, all the services up as much as we can and try to make sure the red team doesn't, the red team is the team that was like trying to hack everybody's stuff, make sure the red team didn't like break all of our stuff. So, and periodically, um, to kind of like add even more to the competition. Yeah. I mean, so, since we're like really official company at this competition, we're supposed to maintain the professional side, and maintaining the professional side basically means that you get tasks from the fake CEO of the company saying that, uh, hey, I've just read about the cloud services, and I'm curious if you could potentially give me an executive summary of what our company should do about moving services to the cloud-based operating systems. And, uh, you have like an hour to figure out what stuff he actually wants to know about and what strategy the company should take. And what helped is like if everybody could kind of like give you a basic idea of what um, the task that you're supposed to write about is, and then the person who's responsible for injects would write an executive summary and basically submit it as part of the competition. And we get about, I think overall it was like 19 injects, which is a lot for two days. And so basically, uh, it had to be like one specific person who would be focusing on the injects while the rest of the team is doing the security stuff and stuff like that. And we also have the another professional side of the competition is to maintain the customer service and customer service was Falcon. Um, yeah, we had a phone in our room, it would ring occasionally. I'd answer it. Um, it was most of the time customers reporting that uh, something broke. That was always an interesting way to find out that our services were no longer working. Um, yeah, just a deep. <laughs> yeah, like when our streams.com webpage was replaced with a video of just a beaver. So what kind of services, what services were you trying to keep up? Uh, there was web, two websites, um, games, and streams.com. So it's like there were supposed to be the websites that uh, people could use. Oh, yeah. You can find any. Yeah. Yeah. 
primary ones. So uh, we we had the FTP servers. We also had network. Uh, there was also oh. trends, which was the XP remote login team, and then Cloud, which is another one. Uh, what else was there? Yeah. There was like a DNS, oh. I think, and um, there's there's like like a DNS, and there was like there were a couple of Windows server uh, yeah, yeah. things that were. Just hey, showed up. All right. There are a couple of Windows servers that we more or less just kind of threw to the wolves because like no one knew what to do with them. So those guys, th those guys fell pretty quickly. But well, with the Windows. Yeah. 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 I still kind of slow down this back in. But yeah. yeah well, the first day. Yeah, I know. Well, the red team it seemed like that the first day mostly what they did is just sort of like kind of like poke around and like sort of like set up some like back doors and whatever and just kind of like snoop out your system. And then the second day for like the first half, they would get a little bit more aggressive with you know, trying to like get in, get their back door stuff. And then the second half of the second day, they were just given the order to burn the whole thing down. Yeah. Like they just got into their injects. One of, our, one of our servers had its disk reformatted so we couldn't even boot it anymore. It was just kind of gnarly toward the end. And we seriously thought that we were like the only team getting crushed that badly. So we were pretty sure we were in last place, but apparent, but we were able to keep some surfaces, you know, online, but just kind of like very shaky. Like they'd go down and then bring it back up, and then they go down and bring it back up. And we had about half of our services down for that period, but apparently other teams just their whole their whole infrastructure was just gone. Um, just to add up on the customer service and like the whole format of foundation for future reference, basically. Uh, it's not important to just maintain the service and like maintain the security side, but it's also like I think equally important to maintain the customer service and the inject, inject side of the competition because it's like uh, they count all of that as the final part of the score. And so, for example, like customer service, we heard some team in a uh, card system for the callers. Basically, like you call it and like, hey, what is your name? Like, what's your problem? And so. Uh, you tell them that your card number is like number three or something. Uh, you write down the number yeah. yeah. yeah, and so it's just like this way it's more organized and like it seems to be more professional for reference. It's like, uh, yeah, so just like maintaining overall professionalism is like, I, I, like everybody knows that it's a fake game, but like as long as you can play the rules and like play the role that you're assigned, you're going to be good. I think one of the problems we had during the, uh, the competition is that we didn't secure every single user like we were supposed to. We were just kind of like a cluster plug when we walked in. I mean, it was three people at a computer and started securing servers, and one person was doing uh, injects and incident reports, and that was, you were doing the incident reports, right? And he, yeah, he was injects. Right. But so the other three computers were just trying to secure the primary servers, but they forgot about the, some of the backend stuff. And so there's a lot of admin accounts that we left um, unsecure. And so something we could probably do to improve on that is to have two people focusing on the primary company's services and the last person going through the rest of all the other servers and making sure that every single account is locked in. How did you lock them down? It's just CH runs? Uh, so a little bit. Um, for a lot of the, like for the Unix boxes, we were like poking around like the Etsy password file and whatever and you know like, when they say go, that's go for the red team as well. So the red team inevitably got into some more machines just because we couldn't like change the root password that quickly because the root password was password. So that's like obviously priority number one was to log in as fast as you can and like change the password. And you know, so they just got into some of our servers. There's not really a whole lot we could do about that besides being faster typers. But and but we poked around like the Etsy password file and we saw like a whole bunch of like fake users like. Nadadi was one, right? So like, you know, like if you're on like Ubuntu or Debian based um, based OS, like nobody's actually a user, like there is a user called nobody. So they kind of like tried to, you know, like, you know, sort of like mask it by calling it Nodadi, replacing the B with the D. I almost fell for that, Davis here did not, so he's the hero in that. And we also found some like old users that, you know, there was like a Ben or something? Yeah. Or ben. There was, there was, yeah, there was Ben, that was when they set up those fake. And there was a previous admin that yeah. had so used last then logged in for a year. Yeah. Um, so they were, that admin had a weak password and was in all of pseudo, pseudo's files and stuff. So, so we disabled his account. Yeah, so pretty much how we disabled it is we went to 
Etsy password and we changed all of like their login shells to sbin no login so they couldn't log in. But then we found out that they could still log in through a Samba server, you know, because apparently you can't do that. So then we went to the Etsy um, shadow file, we backed it up, and then we changed all those passwords to like just some more random hash that we just didn't even know the value of because we were like, get it locked down now. Yeah. Um, oh, other thing I said, it's not a server. Did you get a little bit of that? All right. Anyways, um, let's see. Yeah, I think the two things that we, we, I don't know, I think we could have gotten a lot more done the first day had we been, uh, I don't know, we're, we're <laughs> definitely think Mike's was saying our organization was our downfall. So, I don't know, if we were more on top, we probably could have gotten everything we got done on the first day within, I don't know, a couple hours. Yeah, so like the first inject, the first request from like the CEO for us to do was set up the printer. And that was given to us actually a couple minutes before we actually got into the room. And no one checked our injects for like the first like 20 minutes and we missed that one completely. So we were kind of off to, the, to a bad start like right there and our like whole morale was taken down a notch because we are like, oh crap, we just forgot the first and probably easiest inject of them all. So the competition was essentially two eight hour days. What was the time order for most of the Should I like get this in 15 minutes from now? Um, from now? So like Six the hours from now? frequency of injects was like first hour you get like five injects and you're supposed to get it done with them for the next, I don't know, like one hour, like maybe two hours. And then like after that it kind of settles down to pretty much like one hour, one inject, maybe like two hours for it, like one, I mean two injects for like one hour. And then eventually like the final sort of two hours I think, we just got like a bunch of summaries to you, and that was the time when we kind of like stressed a little bit because we didn't have anything done yet, and so it's like it was like three really huge injects in like one hour. Do the injects like indicate their value, like their point value, or anything? No, no. Like no. it's complex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> very, very complex. The entire time we were like doing this thing, they kept telling us like, oh, you can take snapshots of your servers; they can like revert to it for free, but to revert is fifty points. And then the question everyone had is like, well, how big is 50 points? Like, would we rather keep the service down all day long and not like spend the 50 points, or would we rather spend the 50 points before we have the service down for a couple hours? And they never quantified the value of Yeah, we still don't know. We had it's, no clue. We don't know what our score was. We just know relatively how we did. We know that Air Force was like way above us. We know that we were second, BYU was third. And that's everybody else got negative points. Yeah, and everyone else got negative points, so. Oh, how many negative points? Yeah, and, and like, is a negative score necessarily bad? I don't know. I don't know what a bad score is. No one knows. Well, hopefully, they, they do. I'm hoping we're going to get a scoring breakdown here in the next week or so. Yeah, so another thing to note for those couple final injects we had, which were to document all of our changes we made and all of our past. Every time we do anything, write it down. And don't write it down in the right order because they'll say they're not going to erase it, but they will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, another another well, like, bit of information for the team next year too is um, is that even though the reversion is 50 points, you know they kind of say that, but when the red team the red team came up at the end, they kind of like discussed it, and the way they made it sound is that if you revert, you're pretty much hosed anyway because they know when you're reverting and they're ready. You know when the revert finishes, to just log in right there and just screw everything up again. So. A revert doesn't really gain you a whole lot other than you're just kind of like hosed. Yeah, so pretty much Red Team knows everything that you're doing. And, uh, and you I don't think don't anybody do. have hopes of actually like, keeping this service alive with the Air Force. Position. Like, everybody gets ruined by the Red Team. So. The Red Team said the Air Force was like shutting down their root kits as soon as they got them installed. So we should, yeah. we should be that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want them to be that good because they're managing the military. No, we don't. We want them to be worse if we beat them. <laughs> and then drive. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I, I think we did a relatively decent job of shutting down the brute kids when we saw them active. Like, we were first time. First day, yeah. How well, the second day, day, I mean, like, we were, I mean, like, well, they kind of reset, like, our FTP server's IP address to the IP address of our gateway, and we had no clue how to fix that. Well, they, they, at one point, they just uh, destroyed DNS on yeah. our services, so it was, it was gone unless we did, like, a snapshot for recovery or something. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a little bit brutal, but you know, like we, me and Davis here were kind of actively monitoring the pulse of like of like our Unix machines, and we were like doing lsof-i to see who was listening, and 
we'd see you know a bunch of like red team connections on like Samba or like some weird program we've never heard of like Portmap. I don't even know what Portmap does, but but when we saw that Pit was listening on like some weird port, we killed it right away. And we actually chmodded it to be not executable anymore. So on that note, we should next year. I think it'd be good to. I mean, so each server has a server server, maybe a few that needs to be talking, but you know, otherwise it, there shouldn't be any connections going out. So I mean, that would have, if we'd been able to fix that preemptively, uh, I don't know, like that Java Trojan wouldn't have worked, yeah. for yeah. example. Um, another big one is MySQL should only talk on localhost. Yeah, There's I was, no reason for that to be accessible. I was going to do that the first day and then I forgot, and then we lost one of our <laughs> user accounts. Luckily, it was the user account we used, so I was able to recover that pretty quickly from just like the other service that we had up. But so they were kind of nice in that respect. But you know, when we did that, we patched it up real quick and we got it to listen on localhost only. So yeah, um, so they weren't able to actually destroy our database like a bunch of other teams apparently just had their entire database burned it, burned in the ground. So I still have no idea how they did that directory traversal to get the R57 thing uploaded. Is that oh, I think they probably uploaded it when like. Very early, the first day. Well, I mean, not that they got it in but What's R57? It's a PHP reverse shell. Yeah, so that the R57 script is actually how the red team was able to to um, vandalize our streams page with videos of D Justin Bieber, and so when we when we discovered that, um, we're like, oh crap! We thought we were like hosed at that point. We didn't discover it, but we got a call from a user. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah hey, user I saw talk. Justin Bieber on your guys' page. So you know. <laughs> yeah, so I thought we thought we were hosed at that point. That's when we were actually like seriously talking about doing a snapshot because we didn't have a backup or anything of our index.php file. Make backups. Yeah. Until we realized that the index.php file was actually the default Drupal PHP file. So we fixed that and then we did a backup. Are you not back to see that at this thing? Kind, kind of. of. <laughs> Not really. It was kind of, it was extremely frustrating because yeah. like they had a white list of domains that you could go to. Yeah. It was super frustrating because like we were given Windows and Mac machines, but we weren't really allowed to like download any of like good tools like Nmap or Nessus or anything. Like, put it. like we kind of had to like, we had to try to find Windows binaries, then we had to try to find Windows binaries that weren't viruses, and it was just kind of like this giant battle. And I'm like, why can't I just do sudo app git install Nmap? Yeah. Yeah. The Debian, so half you, of the Debian repositories were blacklisted, which was And you had no Linux client box to use. We had no yeah. Linux client yeah. box either, and it just frustrated me. Were you allowed to, uh, could you boot it, or were you allowed to bring a USB with that? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah so you could bring like that track or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah that would have been nice. But that, that, I guess in, in a sense that makes sense too. Right? They, yeah, so, uh -huh. yeah, it's like I couldn't have that. Yeah, but I don't know. So, I don't know. Their, their whitelisting was pretty spotty. Like, they had. We, they gave us a Hotmail email address, and Hotmail wasn't on the whitelist for the first six hours of competition or something, so that was, that was interesting. Did you guys ever, because you were allowed to request things. Yeah, yeah so that got whitelisted eventually. We requested yeah. Nmap too, but that took a day and a half. Yeah, that took like a day. And we were able to download it like halfway to the second day, and, like, <laughs> and we used it to port scan our own router, so. <laughs> Like we used it like after they like reset the DNS and we knew some or reset the IP address of our FTP to be our gateway. And we knew something funky was going on with our gateway, so I did a port scan on it and just found out it was a router. So I was like, great, no idea what's going on. Yeah. So the first day you didn't have access to your networking infrastructure. Yeah, right? no. Not really not the router or the firewall. So the first day was pretty much all just hosts working directly on the Yeah. Production. Okay. So all the red team did was try to get in with default credentials and when they did. And they did break into every team's network somewhere, and then they just put a rootkit on there that opened up, you know, four or five back doors. Yeah, well, like so, legitimately, I don't think there's any real way around that. I mean, you have to be really, really fast in order to patch it up before the red team can get it. Right. We were talking about in the car ride back up here that you know it might be plausible to take it offline for the first hour that you're locking down everything and changing default passwords and then just bring everything back up. Yeah, that might you know, that might save you points in there. It could be worth it, but depending on how they score, you know, there's really yeah, yeah I, um, I don't know, we locked down SSH after the first day. We could have locked down SSH a lot faster if we just, you know, had SCP or something and just copied our SSH config up to all of our servers. So I don't so know. So what we were you doing to lock it down, like limit, to set a limit on the user? Yeah, so I don't know. We were removing users with weak passwords, changing passwords, fixing SSH config to, you know, not allow any passwords. Did you limit SSH only for certain users, for allowing a user? Yeah. 
Well, yeah, well, we did. Yeah, we should have said. Yeah, so, so for the team next year, is that one of the first like security things we we're trying to do with SSH was to um, was to disable root login, which you're supposed to do. But it turns out half their services need root login to do it. So like half of our stuff was down for like okay, not half, but like three services were probably down for the first half of the first day because we couldn't figure out why they were down until we permitted root login. Yeah, it turned out their shortage and needed root login. So that was. Yeah, there was like a, I don't think it necessarily needed root login because I think you could specify the credentials. Right, but you know, at the same time, we didn't know there was a, a field in the scoring engine called change password request. Yeah. And to all of us, that sounded like we send them that when we want our password changed, but it was actually us updating them so they could update their stuff for the scoring engine. Yeah, the company should have a solid amount of poor communication. <laughs> yeah, so for like half the day, one of our services was down because we communicated the wrong password, <laughs> which was so kind of like knows how many points we lost because that was just silly. Who so were the great. various people you interact with in the competition? So you were the blue team, the red team was attacking you. There was someone in your room at all times. There was. Right? Yeah, there was the, the white, white team. team. I think they were just observing, and there were means of communication between us, the black team who took care of infrastructure and stuff. They were also taking notes, I assume yeah, they were scoring all those yes. scoring through interaction. Just say the did notes between the work. Did you try acting for it? I seriously doubt that we did it yeah. yeah. online. Did I did notice that they never blacked this panel? So like, did anyone try You know what, I pinged my server on the whitelist. I pinged my server and it was whitelisted for some reason. Yeah, I was able to. So I could have just tunneled through my server and got everything, but I figured that'd be against the spirit. Right, yeah, I figured You're just slightly questionable. I found out that Moxie and like the Elras and the Colorado domain were were completely whitelisted, so we could have tunneled in through those and gotten our stuff. So I mean, I mean, there's a little bit of a security hole, but we decided that we might as well just be in the spirit of the competition and you know not like you know cheat. Although I'm gonna try to tell them it's open. See, it's open for you. <laughs> I'm gonna try to tell them next year not to just to open up the internet, but we'll see. It yeah, because I mean, it was it was kind of crap because you go and you like look up like. You know, R fifty seven up PHP to see if it's like malicious, and then like you see like you know well, you the first Google entry that's like R fifty seven isn't executable. That did you try dot, dot, dot. Did you ever load the cache page in Google? You know, I actually thought about that, but I forgot how to do that. So uh, I did that. Is, if you just click next on search results, and those are all on Google servers. So okay. if Google dot com is whitelisted, you can generally get what's the cache page. Google will Google well, like saves yeah. a copy of every page it scrapes online. Uh, so if it ever gets taken down or if you're behind a firewall, you can. So the cache version, you know, can be kind of crappy. Often it breaks like image links. There's also Google You just need to read some text. So Google yeah. translate yeah. words and proxy because you can just tell the translate web page for you, and then just translate the English. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Huh. And the I other thing was is that every single team failed horribly at uh, Active Directory, and I think <laughs> that if we had looked at it at all, we could have, you know. So what was Tell the Active Directory there. stuff you had to deal with? Like, did you have machines that were using Active Directory? Servers. Were, so the problem was, is the first thing we checked when we got there is the workstations, but the workstations weren't on Active Directory, so it totally just got forgotten about for the rest of the competition. <laughs> and basically what they did is they took ownership of one of the servers, and then once they got access to Active Directory, they made a malicious group policy object. And yeah, we so that, and that, that group thing. policy object yes. can be applied to any machine in Active Directory, so you know they did whatever they want with Windows machines. Yeah, so I mean I think we were pretty much locked out of our Windows machines. At the, you know when the red team actually got like really like like when they really started to like pick up steam, they they locked us out of our Windows. We machines. never lost DC one at Trent. Yeah, you know, they never even access. According to the, yeah, yeah, according to the, yeah. So you, what kind of services are running under Windows? Do you have like a Windows based We had a couple of servers. There we had like a DNS server. Yeah, I think a DNS server. Was there like a center? Was there IIS? Was there IIS? <laughs> you have like a Windows based website? No, there was an IIS. Some of our internal ones too. I just one server. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Streams was, Streams was Drupal. What was Games? Yeah, yeah, games were really yeah, yeah. They, were, they, they were pretty close to carbon copies of each other aside from the pages. So right. we, when we would lose something on streams, we would like we would like go into games and see like that's how I recovered like the Regis L one account on streams when we lost it is I looked into the games database and there was a Regis L one with the same password and everything, so we just kinda you know, just kinda like brought it over and went, like whatever. I mean Regis L one was actually like the account for us on streams and games, so it's not like a customer's 
you know, account where it gives you mad. Does Drupal off. use PHP? Like you couldn't just shut off PHP. No, they were yeah, their Drupal. whole websites are built on PHP. Yeah. So yeah, we don't. We I mean, we didn't really look into like any cross-site scripting attacks or anything because we didn't know like where to start. You know, so we were just kind of like, hopefully there's not any cross-site scripting and they're not going to make us, you know, look through thousands of lines of Drupal code to try and find the cross-site scripting. You can all, I mean, did the websites allow users to post content though? Yeah, they they can post content, we never, we never looked at like snail tagging comments or anything, so. Yeah. If you have a website where users can't post content, that eliminates a whole set of cross-site. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, it's if you have, well, I, yeah, I doubt Firefox had it there. You had Firefox, but if Firefox has no script, you'll oftentimes block. You'll be on pages and you'll submit a form and be like, hey, there's a suspicious form here that could be a cross site scripting problem. And they did say they were installing JavaScript hooks into a lot of the pages. And have you used, you said you could finally got Nessus running at one point, right? No, we got in map. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say, do you use Nessus before? That's kind of a big tool, though. Yeah, I mean, well, Nessus I used it a little, little bit before in, right. in ethical hacking, but not really a lot beyond that. <coughs> you know, it was actually kind of funny. We had originally before going into the competition, we we had like the Splunk server that was set up, and you know, like apparently it's supposed to be this great tool. We had like three people dedicated to like learning Splunk yeah, and, and so using the server, use it. and we just didn't use it. That yeah. <laughs> mail worked down quickly. <laughs> It's uh, now network forensics, you know, yeah. lots of Well, it's more of a, it's, yeah. it's not forensics as much as it's intrusion detection. Yeah. So you did have That's one forensics nice. thing within Yeah, that was how did that go? Yeah, that was all. So this was a piece of software yeah. you had never seen before, and you had to do something. Uh, it was it. relatively simple to use. We got like a lab sheet, like you get in a physics lab that says do this, do this, do this, and we just follow the instructions. We literally made up homework in a competition. Yeah. <laughs> They busted in there like you were, you know, our license for in case expires in standing. two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were there. Yeah, yeah. We kept using sure. it for another like half hour. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah, yeah, just the competition. What did you say there? Expired. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. nothing. That just well, I think they just had a trial license. I don't think they right. had a bottle yeah. license. Um, they didn't give it to us for long enough. <laughs> there, I mean, if forensics is something you're interested in, we could do a talk on it sometime. There are good open source forensics tools out there. So without having to pay a scene sums of money to a company like the guys who run in case, you can get good forensics tools and just play with them. But yeah, that's something we didn't really focus on. And you said you didn't really use Splunk. Yeah, no, we opened it once. Yeah, we <laughs> opened it, we got lost. We saw that our last data was like an hour ago, and we were like, oh, we were supposed to set it up to collect data, and we never did. So, yeah. so we kind of just like threw that to the wolves, too. What were they doing with own cloud? Did you have any own cloud at all? We could have used own cloud for our own convenience, but we didn't. Yeah. And at one point, the employees' own cloud accounts died, or we deleted yeah, them. That, or yeah, and so we, we saw an additional user in own cloud directory with admin. So we panicked and we deleted everybody's except for our own account. <laughs> yeah, Brian was like, delete, delete, delete. And, and, and yeah, so. That was, that was did really they call him? Yeah. Yes, they did call him, but we can't. Or not. Well, that, I don't know if he cheated or not. I think we finessed the situation like a security professional would have That was awesome. Yeah, they didn't have any files in their Dropbox, so we just told them that we reset yeah. their password. We didn't tell them that they. Told them we were Why didn't you just do chmod 0000? It was a Windows thing. Yeah, yeah. I can't. And CHMOD is more for locking down like a directory or a file as opposed to yeah, you getting can, rid of a malicious user. Yeah, you can chmod your own stuff to be whatever you want, you know, so we would need to also change like the owner to root or something like that. I mean, it worked pretty well to just change a login to bin no login and then for other services that, you know, were beyond just like a shell like Samba, just going to the Etsy password thing and just like yeah. shut down their... <coughs> Off Samba because there was no reason to have that. Open. Yeah, there were a lot of services that there were no reason. Like the red team was trying to break in through like Sun RPC, like something like that. There's apparently a vulnerability, so we ended up just shutting that down, and no one complained. So we we're just like, whatever. <laughs> what did you shut down? Uh, Sun, it's, yeah, it's Sun, Sun thing. It's for remote procedure calls, which is mm -hmm. bad. You can the name sounds bad. So instead of just changing password hashes, which we just kind of blind is out. a little gnarly. Um, you can, if you just remove the password hash altogether, it'll disable logins. Really? So, I, so you can do, if you do, there's like, a, if you use the change password command, there's a flag, you can give it to do this automatically, but like, okay. on Ubuntu by default, that's what they do for root. So like, you know, on a default Ubuntu box, even if you're sitting in front of it, you cannot, you can never log in as root. You have to always sudo or su into root. So it, it'll allow you to maintain the account, but it eliminates anyone's ability to log into it directly. 
Yeah, we would have been pretty a lot quicker too if we had like I don't know user Dell or like Dell user. They didn't have Dell user or user mod installed on their boxes. So these were like Debian systems, yeah. not. No, they, they were like Red Hat, yeah. so, which Red Hat's so, a little bit strange. Like I, it took me forever to find the lsof yeah. command because they put it in like slash sbin yeah, or their whatever. Their path variable was missing a bunch of places you'd think they would include. Yeah, like slash bin wasn't on their path variable or something. It's just like what the hell, guys? Seriously. So it was all Red Hat. Yeah, but they had one Debian. Yeah, server. there was one Debian. The block server with Debian. And did yeah. Red Hat have oh, access to its repos? Could you update half of them? Like it was chronically like half. The I, got, the I got halfway through yucking something, and then it would stop. And yeah, like the Debian, the Debian box too. Like they set it up so like one, like the first thing you're supposed to do is like an app get upgrade. I I did that, and it got to like 14% of downloading like the data, and then just froze. So Some of that was just, just they were having some network issues. Yeah, they were having, and yeah. yeah, the network was constantly slow. Like we were, we thought we were being DDoS a lot of times when we weren't because our servers were just unresponsive. Yeah. Oh yeah, one, snapshot. That one time we requested a snapshot for backup purposes, and that just brought down one of our services because apparently they can't take a snapshot and run a VM at the same time. Because <laughs> they're, they're just their virtual machines, so they're not capable of doing that. So we we uh, dosed ourselves well, for an hour on our four servers. This is you know, yeah. a crappy hypervisor. But I, I think they did give us the points back because they understood. Yeah. What we were I think they were secretly running like all of our services on an iPhone, like it was just like a first generation iPhone, because it was really slow, like just awful, awful infrastructure. I know. I remember, you know, when I was looking at the the NAT table to see what kind of like activity was going on in the network, there were some really like there are obvious clues now as to like you know internal data servers that were communicate communicating to the outside world because of like reverse beaconing Trojans. That should have been really obvious, and it just wasn't something. So. Did you really do any traffic sniffing at all? Did you fire a wire truck no. ever? No. no. Yeah, we were. We were I just like, did like router statistics and then like the ARP table and stuff. Wire What did you end up having for a firewall when you? So the second day when you got access. To it was it, a Cisco Adaptive Security Appliance. Like an eight hundred fifty five hundred five or something like that. I don't, I don't remember the model. But they, uh, the only thing they did with that is if you didn't set up the SNMP community string to be something secure rather than just public and private, they put like a user account on there. Stuff, but did you but did you actually use it as a firewall? Yeah. Did you locked down. So it was using that. I assume it was like NAT also. Was it doing NATing? You know? No, the NATing stuff was happening on the router. At least the NAT tables. Okay. Was so like the firewall you could literally just like set up rules about I ports didn't. that could go through. Or what were you doing on the firewall? I mean, I didn't. I didn't do much. All I did when I when I locked them out because I thought they created a malicious user, but they told me after. So you didn't really leverage the firewall to like further lock down no. No. services. Yeah, we really should have. I mean, yeah, there were tons of things talking ports that really had no business doing anything <laughs> for like yeah. 10 minutes of the competition. So we really should have put that down a lot better. Did you run local firewalls at all? No, we were, I don't know, we were just kind of scrambling. Yeah, like, I, I think, I don't think any of the servers, maybe one of the servers actually had uh, well, IP tables. There's, there's all the other ones that not. There's Windows firewall. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, oh, yeah, we, we built firewall. As we mentioned, when Windows <laughs> servers were just kind of left yeah. behind. Yeah, we just kind of <laughs> like, okay, guys, game plan. Who's the Windows servers? Let's just try yeah, to keep which everything Which is unfortunate because one of our, D our DNS server that we need to keep up. I don't know, a bunch of our servers is wrong. Yeah, well, I mean, like, we, yeah. we didn't know the login password to the mail server and the data center server. Yeah, there's on that external system. network, we couldn't find it on their piece of paper until halfway through the second day. Which we so actually like, discovered that it was mislabeled as another service. We, yeah, we really just got lucky that you know every other team failed miserably at that aspect of the competition too, because we yeah we uh, left those servers untouched for the team. Was the router Cisco hardware as well? Yes, yeah, just a Cisco switch. Was there much you had to do in there? No, I did the same thing. I did the community strings, and then I tried to do some. So you have to like set up. You weren't like going to build VLANs or any of that kind of stuff. Everything was on VLANs, but I didn't. I don't. I didn't it was already pre set up. Yes, everything was pre set up. I didn't know enough to. Lock yeah, the story there was through. like, it was set up, and then we got a inject from the CEO that said we trust you enough now, or maybe an email or something. It was like we trust you enough now to give you the router. Like, oh yeah, yeah. And I messed up the credentials. You know, we we get the right credential. We got the wrong sheet for our for our particular router. So it was an easy fix, but it did not time, trace the red team the credentials for another team and return for them backing off for a few minutes. And we we also got really lucky because we I I didn't do anything for wireless, and they were just nice enough to not attack wireless. Yeah. So what were they saying about wireless? They were they were going to attack it, but like they picked up like all of our phones that we yeah, had. Yeah. There was a thing called Pineapple that if you had your phone on was connected to Wi-Fi, they would disconnect it, and then when you went to reconnect it, they would steal the credentials you reconnected with. 
And because of the spirit of the competition, it was a little invasive to be stealing our personal phone data. So they were, yeah, they were nice enough to. Yeah. I mean, they didn't point this out, but the general rule of thumb is when you show up at a hacking competition, you turn off the Wi-Fi. I don't think anybody had their phones on. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I, I had their Wi-Fi on. So they used their iPhones. So. Yeah, it's like we were, we were good. It wasn't our team. So. <laughs> Nobody had their junk. Nobody had their airplanes. Maybe we got both those patents for not having any phones on. I really, I really want to get the scoring breakdown for that now. Yeah, yeah, I, think yeah I think it's, I think it's coming. I'll, if I, if I don't see it by the end of the week, I'll, I'll <laughs> hit up the guys at Regis and see if I can listen to them. Yeah, um, and I understand the scoring engine is complex. <laughs> that's the answer. We so, have a lot. if you guys were gonna, you know, build the training regiment for next year, like what topics would you focus on? Uh, so go to the team portal, look it, up Injex. <laughs> first thing you do. So we didn't even check our team portal for the first Injex until after the first inject was yeah. due. Yeah. So we missed the first inject was just setting up a printer. Honestly, like the easiest yeah. thing we could have done. I would just have done an email show. No, it was already on the network or anything. You just had to like right click on it and troubleshoot to find the driver. That was, oh. that was the inject and we missed it because we didn't check it. So. Yeah, so I get right top inject. I think organization was honestly, like even with our current knowledge of the tool we were using, which isn't expensive, Better organization would have helped us a lot. What was yeah. the biggest organizational challenge? Not having enough computers? Yeah. Well, and that, that, that definitely was perfect. But like in terms of something we could have controlled, I think, just saying, we need to do this on all the units boxes, and then having someone go through and check them off. Yeah, right. So we had like a we had like a checklist that of all the things we're going to do to harden a server, and we just didn't follow it at yeah. all. Yeah. So we were, if I kind of felt like we were like bouncing between tasks instead of just like getting something done, getting the next thing done. Not even walk away. Yeah. Yeah. Making sure something productive because there was only four workstations for eight people, something productive needed to be happening on that workstation, you know, twenty four seven. So that would be a big difference. Eight. Did they hack them at night when you guys were asleep? No, 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 no. That's why they sent us home. Except for the whiteboard, social engineering. Yeah, yeah the cleaning crew erased the whiteboard, which, if we were good system admins and we didn't use repeat passwords, would have been a disaster. But we pretty yeah, much, we pretty much used no one took a picture. I guess you guys didn't necessarily. Yeah, they, 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 they explicitly said them. your whiteboards won't be erased. Yeah, your, your whiteboards will be fine. Then you all can frankly believe you. Basically, <laughs> you basically say, well, yeah, but I'm not based on there. Yeah, so next year, yeah, use the webcam on computers to photograph the whiteboards and probably the room just in case. Yeah, and I think that yeah. the changes that we made, uh, you know, for the second day in terms of figuring out who was going to do what based on what happened the first day made a big difference. We are a lot more productive. So organization, what other things would you? In terms of skills to pick up, I think we got screwed on administration the most. So like, I run a Linux server. I think Josh did. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, but none of us have run Windows servers before. So you know, yeah. someone had to do that. Wait till Ryan do that. Yeah. He's not here. So. Oh yeah, Ryan. <laughs> um, yeah. So administration skills would be good. I guess getting more proficient at those, like network scanning and vulnerability scanning tools. Right. If we if we get access to them next year, you know, who knows? But we could have actually. That's a good point. We could have uploaded binaries to our GitHub, our public GitHub. Right? Yeah, that's what I was saying, but I didn't know if that was. So we, yeah, we weren't quite sure whether that was legal or not. Some community checking that, or yeah, we were wanting to upload. Oh, I think some of those rules are going to get relaxed next year. Yeah, like it was just super in frustrating. World, you always, always can access good internet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the real world, the red team is a nice team on the first day, though. So right, and at the, yeah, same, so. at the same time, it, since it's a competition, it's meant to be world, fair. Yeah. They yeah. don't want people to have access to like software that they paid $150 for. Actually, you yeah. know, but then you, just, also, then you just, you know, they're monitoring your network traffic, but then it's, right? So they can catch that anyway while still letting you have access to everything. Yeah. But it's still kind of dumb because they set up a Splunk server, so you know. No, that's what I mean. It wasn't allowed. That's what I meant. Like that's why they tried. Right, to keep but they can it. still make it not allowed, and they can just enforce that. Like they can just qualify you, right? right? Or someone in your room watching what you're doing, right? If, yeah. You know, there's yeah. ways to cut you. I'm really sure they're not watching. They did They were bored exactly. out of their minds like 80 percent of the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they did say they were monitoring all your web traffic too, though. So they were making a yeah, list of all I mean, the security. I'm sure they have security people and stuff. Oh. So that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, but it, and in some ways, though, the way they, the whitelist doesn't prevent the, you have an advantage if you bought expensive software, right? So it didn't really come into play for the case, but if they hadn't have given you the step-by-step -step things, teams would have had an advantage who had bought the case in advance, right? Same which is Splunk too, you know? So yeah, that is a multi well, Splunk Splunk's a little bit better have. because Splunk has pretty permissive free licenses if you just want to mess around with it. Yeah, but if someone, you know, if like, you know, Airports had access, you know, has trained on like a $300 Splunk license or whatever, 
for years, and then like three hundred dollars. And then child, you have some child. Three hundred dollars a month. Multiply ten or a hundred. <laughs> okay, if they had access to like a three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> server license, then then you know, like they kind of had an advantage because they knew how to use Splunk. Whereas all yeah. of us were like, we just want Nessus and Nmap. That's all we want. They're free tools. They're open source. We don't need this proprietor. We don't even need a separate server for them. We just want these. And we it's need like no GCC. On our server, so like we could get the source code and we not compile that it. That strikes me as bizarre. It was a really simple compiler. I don't think I've ever been on an Xbox that didn't understand. Like they were, they were bare bones Red Hat servers that they had. Like they spun them up and they just like threw the website out and they installed Apache and MySQL. And that's pretty much it. Are we gonna get feedback stuff soon? That'd be really cool. I don't know why you guys didn't just write a C compiler and assemble it. That's what I would have done. Well, we could just pick up all the static eighteen hours of the competition. Although I think we would need to cross compile our stuff for you know ARM since it was probably running on an iPhone anyway. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of gets me though is that it seems like the basis of their hacking was getting in initially with default logins and then installing installing those rootkits. So there was nothing you know amazing about what they did to yeah, initially just break into our browser. Yeah, yeah. They just took advantage of the fact that you know. All yeah. the passwords to in some sense, though, we had just come in as consultants. They probably they could have already had some rootkits on some systems that could kind of be representative. Of right. The, yeah. yeah. And right. I think if they wanted everybody to get hacked and see yeah. who handled it the best. To get yeah. that. Exactly. I mean, the spirit of the competition was you're going to get hacked. Your services are going to go down. You need to be able to just respond to them in like sort of like a cool and collective manner and bring them back up if you can. Although it would be slightly more realistic if they like gave you the first hour of the competition Off before the, the, like the red team yeah. started an hour later. Because in real life you're always gonna have a chance to lock some. I mean yeah. if you get a consulting job where you don't you're walking into the situation's that bad, don't take the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in real life you're in always, case, always gonna have a chance to lock yeah. things down before it's I mean if you screw it up then you're still hoped. Yeah, right? We get well, physical sure. access to our servers through um, a VMware uh, client, but they wouldn't even let us power cycle them. Yeah, the like, second day we could power we, we cycle We sent a service request to go to like a request to power cycle, and they responded like three hours later after we didn't need it to be power cycled. We got it the next day. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. that actually might have been the next day. <laughs> yeah, so, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> in terms of things to learn next year from the right half of the group, do you have anything to add? Um, I have more to add. If, yeah, I okay. yeah. As team cheer leader, I found uh, <laughs> <laughs> physical security stuff uh, kind of. Did make a difference because uh, red team was checking physical security. Like they walk up to the window, check our whiteboards and shit like that. So put paper on the glass outside the door. Try to enforce your physical security. Um, another thing they were looking for was sign-in sheets. So everybody who walked in through the door, they wanted to see some sort of sign-in sheet. So to make sure that you're verifying who's walking through your door. Um, did they, they want to see that? Yeah, it's like John to be right. Yeah. 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 For the ticket system, we were yeah, just getting like, you know, we got like calls and emails but, yeah, from, from, I mean, from the customers. Yeah, competition it was, yeah. is so different from yeah. your year. I think folks on specifics like that might be right. Like, but I mean, the, I think there will generally be a customer service aspect, you know, even even you know next time around. So you know, they came up with a ticket numbering system, yeah. and that was like. That Have was you guys ever really used a real ticketing really system like RT? Or I use Trapeze. Yeah, like 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 What'd you say? RT is the one we use in the C-cell now. Um, for ticketing? Yeah. yeah so it's, you know, these are systems that essentially, you know, let you set up things that need to be done in the science specific, you know, it's essentially like, a, it's what you're doing on the whiteboard, but digital. And it does, they can be helpful in keeping track of when things need to be done and requests that come in and, you know, follow that check. So yeah, figuring out like beforehand a good way to handle organization would be really strong. Uh, another thing we're missing on, I don't know if someone could go out and like web development, like spin up an Apache yeah. server and mess around with it because really we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah. yeah so and, and also trying to find like what you know learning Drupal is good. I mean what they've had in both times and C was represented had some Drupal on there. And so like when we were looking at all these PHP files, we didn't know which ones were malicious. We were all like there was like a you know there's the R57 about PHP which was suspicious. So we we like moved that to like slash ten, but then we made sure the website was still up and seemed to be functioning, so we removed it. And then there was a... Um, it was update.jar. 
And then there was like a update, there was an update about PHP as well, which was actually a copy of R57, but I don't think any of us touched that because we were like, that sounds like an important Drupal thing. I don't know Drupal. So what we found R57, they said that when they initially uploaded the main copy, so we could just use to find XR, XR to diff to like find which where the copies were. Yeah, we probably could. I mean like Stuff like that too. I mean, they're going to plant all kinds of rootkits all over the place. You know, multiple different things. There's, yeah, like uh, Falcon said, update.jar, which Davis saved me on again because I saw that and I was like, eh. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> Davis was the one that was smart enough to actually kill it. And I was like, deal on the Windows side too. They had uh, some DD scripts that were running in startup and they were plotting down the CPU immensely. Yeah, definitely check uh, Task Manager when you run into Windows. Um, just monitor CPU, RAM usage. The one me and Falcon found was Met SVC server, and that was ramping up the CPU to 100%. So if you backtrack that into the Windows system file, you could have found the SVC, which was a Metasploit attack. And then if you check the temporary files, um, we actually found the Metasploit hook that was dropping in all those exploits. So definitely check your Windows system files. Yeah, they, they had a botnet on every every single team's Windows server, and. It was just named like what bot.exe, uh, and not a single team found it. So like simple stuff like going like a task manager in Windows and looking at the process. So list. definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely, Windows is a skill that we need for next year. And you know, just general like more Linux dexterity wouldn't hurt either. You know, to have more people because we had like what three or four, I guess like four or five uh, Linux boxes, and you know we were trying to lock them down, but we didn't really have enough people on that that could just go in there and just like shut down the the inactive people fast enough. So yeah, the whole lack of workstations um, yeah, that adds a large element into the competition as um, only half of your team can at any time be on a workstation doing something and the other half has to find uh, different ways to make themselves useful, whether it's uh, administration or customer service or uh, just general organization. And one of those workstations pretty much has to be used to respond to injects. So were you, with Ninja, you just like writing in Microsoft Word and saving them locally? Is that like the workflow? Yeah, yeah. So just like, yeah, you had to convert into PDF. Yeah, yeah it's about as complicated cover as it got. We got that sexy cover letter. So Why did you convert into PDF? That's just the way they wanted the submissions. Yeah. yeah. Plus, because they didn't know what text that they were using. Or you'll yeah. get an angry email from someone like me explaining that not everyone here uses Microsoft Office. <laughs> 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 That's exactly how I am. It just irritates the hell out of me. Because on the other side of campus, all the professors distribute all their crap as doc X. Yeah, my demand. Well, it's, it's also a good, whenever I get an email from a recruiter and they like send me the job description as a word file, Jeez. I just delete the email right away. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good first pass, right? You know? yeah. 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 Well, if they send me a PDF, I delete it right away because PDFs are notorious for accessibility issues. <laughs> well, that's yeah. true. But that's fair. Yeah. But <laughs> Microsoft Office sucks. <laughs> well, it's all Microsoft. Can you open that format and open up to me? Yeah, the formatting gets all screwed up. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. no it's it's just just it's it's you, which just gets phrenic. <laughs> or whether you're just opening it in the wrong program. <laughs> yeah. It should just really be your swing through this uh, presentation, like uh, a final product that's uh, yeah, not like something in progress, like a doc might be. That's why HTML is so great. Well, you're welcome to send me HTML files. That's cool. <laughs> I think it made a big difference yeah, just for a, next year to plan for four workstations. And if there's more, all right. right yeah, so I right. can't, I don't. I think we planned for like eight. Did you really have the advanced yeah, was going to be four workstations? There was a picture on that sheet of four workstations. Okay. So, so we should have been the sheet. Of there, four there, were, there were four red team yeah. members, though. <laughs> well, okay. that's not going to fly. But they got there were 25 red team members, which is roughly four per team. So, you know. <laughs> Okay, okay, anyway, yeah, I don't know, just another lesson learned was whenever you find anything that's an exploit and you kill it, write an incident report back. Because apparently part of the complex scoring method was when they successfully executed an exploit on you, they would, you would lose points of the team, and if you submitted a report about it, you would gain points back. Yeah, communication so, killed it. So like half the things we killed, yeah. we didn't even, I don't, when we found our 57, did we even I was like the only one that we Well, our 57, we got, we got, we got pretty, like, we got shut down because of that for a little bit. Yeah, and so I think we did. Update.jar, which was their Java Trojan, we did. <laughs> we didn't uh, yeah. write a report over it. Like a, a but they do get some of them we got points for, though. Yeah. Like the reverse beaconing Trojan, whenever we that took that out of a server. No, no. That was, that was, that was it. That's the Java Trojan. Okay, but anyways, yeah, so once you got rid of that, obviously it wasn't beaconing back to the red team, so, yeah, so we would get points for shutting it down. Yeah, right. I don't think we did. I have to get upgraded one thing, I think. 
Did you run Windows update at all? I enabled Windows Once update, again, but I never installed it. Not too much. <laughs> probably start by, you know, like I said, we're done this We only got access to one of the Windows machines uh, halfway through the second. <laughs> no, two of them. After they yeah. Yeah, enabled yeah. our Windows update server, probably. Um, I mean, yeah. Did you guys do anything to like actively monitor your services? I mean, you mentioned that you did the slides. You did Justin Fiber. Yeah, the We got Justin. Yeah. We got the call. We get calls about things being down before the scoring engine would say that they went down. But but you wouldn't like actively. You wouldn't. Anything like all your services or checking Well, so, so in the middle of the second day, I did a watch on LSOF I to you know watch and see when a renting member would open up like a you know an RPC proxy or something like that, so I could just like kill it on the spot. I just open files as I was like, as I was you know doing sort of like my other stuff, I'd see like, oh, renting member is trying to access my SQL, restart my SQL, and then like eventually just get around to actually locking it down, but like. You know, while I was doing other stuff too, and I'd see him jump on, I would just like either bounce the service or just kill it until I could actually get around. Yeah, I think we got we got way too reliant on the scoring system to check if services were up, which was a bad idea because it would be updated every 15 minutes. So yeah, in hindsight, that would have been a good idea too. It's just a little bit hard to tell in some cases. Though. Like it would say games.com uh, is down, but we'd show it as up. We were given a VPN, but we were given a username and password and. Uh, no post name or anything, and we never ended up using that. <coughs> yeah. We got to do it eventually, didn't we? No. No. Yeah, they gave VPN credentials, but didn't post what host name to use them on. So we were just like, okay, yeah. I don't know what we're talking about. What do we do with this? Yeah, so I think I think something I would recommend for the team next year, too, is to make sure that, is to write like a rudimentary um, script that just like pings each server like three times just to make sure it somehow alerts you if you fail. And um, and also like make sure that you put like your SSH hosts and stuff. Like if you're in Putty, like save your hosts. And if you're like on uh, the Mac OS machine, you can like put them in your Etsy hosts and whatever. So you can just you know you can just type like SSH streams as opposed to doing SSH www.streams.com or SSH db.maestro.local2. You know. So I could just do like SSH db and it would log me in. How do you do that? Uh, so if you just in like my Etsy, like I was on the Mac box for pretty much entirely the first day. So what I did is I just in my Etsy post file, I just added, um, I got the IP address and you know I just put the IP address of like the db.maestro2.local box, and then you know next to it I just put db. You, you know, can also set up an SSH config file. So in your yeah. home directory, if then SSH you have a file called config, you can set up aliases and like default usernames, default ports. Yeah, I mean, yeah, any of that would have helped. So, you know, because I spent a lot of time like trying to SHA and be like, oh crap, this one's root. Oh crap, this one's Maestro. This one doesn't have root or Maestro because it's a Linux box <laughs> or because it's a Windows box or, you know, whatever. And it's just so we only have a second left. But um, <clears throat> did you guys enjoy it? Would you encourage future people to join? I know, did enjoy you it some of you, but I wouldn't do it again. Do you? Yeah, you no, know, I, more I, now. I enjoy it. Mainly because we got second. I, so I was like, like, yeah, I was yeah. rethinking my career choice. Like, we had a competition, <laughs> then we got second. I was like, oh, this is good. So if we hadn't gotten second place, you'd all be way more down trot. Oh, yeah. I don't know about that. Sure. I mean, like, it's always good to know that you did pretty well. Because if we didn't get second place, we got like, even if we got like fourth place, we wouldn't have done it because they only named the top three. I mean, we all would have thought we had last place because I mean, we were just getting hammered at the end. But yeah. apparently, everyone else was just getting like bludgeed to death at the end. Yeah, so our last so hour and a half, we like we rolled over. Yeah, we had yeah, 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 still waiting for the when they blew up DNS on one of our core services. We were just like, you guys still waiting for the email to come in saying they made a giant mistake? Yeah, please don't. Please don't. Don't tell us. Don't say that. Tony over here. I was saying that here, Mark, that you meant to say CSU. <laughs> yeah, so it's only just like ruin the competition for us on the oh, way back. Thanks. You know? <laughs> thanks, sorry guys. <laughs> well, when Raytheon emailed us today, I figured they'd at least double check it, right? So, like, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, like, it, it was kind of funny because we're sitting there in our room, we're like deep in despair, and the white team is, you know, sitting back there, and we're just like, you know, they're probably overhearing us going, oh my god, we're in last place. <laughs> we're just doing you know, just awful. They're probably just sitting there chuckling with themselves, like, you're not doing even as bad as those guys, and, you know, like the room next to you, you know? BYU was next to us. I can only imagine the difference in experience for the white team when they went to BYU with, like, all the Mormons who don't swear anything. And then they come over and you see the CU room, and we're just wiping it up all over the place. Yeah, we didn't have that very clean. We were good on the phone, though. We were good on the phone. We didn't 
upside customers. Just like the customers don't want to hear us in the background. Because <laughs> in like the airport firm, they just you know, start and they did every address with sir. <laughs> with what? Sir. Oh, they got to do that though. They're you know they're <coughs> US they, government. They they for them. Don't have to feel bad. For they won. They, yeah, they deserve it. They have a good team. But, oh yeah, I can only imagine why. You know, if you guys want to put in 10 hours of every week between now and the next competition, you'd be right there with us. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I knew about this competition like when Tony told me about it three weeks ago. So, <laughs> you know, we didn't really have a whole lot of time to, you know, practice and like actually build together a cohesive team. But good job, team. It was, well. it was more fun that way, you know. We got, yeah, our, yeah. we got our asses kicked. You know, so. We had some good team. It's good learning experience, yeah. Everyone did what they could to make themselves useful, especially with the workstation. Level. You guys didn't get any fist fights? But yes, yeah, yeah. we almost you, got in a fist fight <laughs> at the end of the first day. Oh, and they were like winning in some like service. Oh yeah, so at the end of the first day they announced who was in the lead. So there's three categories: which customer service, <coughs> injects, and services. Yeah. And they announced who was like the top team or top couple teams for each one of them. And we weren't any of those. So like, oh, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and actually, at the end of the first day, so like after that R57 inject, they posted about Justin Bieber, and then when we found it and fixed it. They were able to get in again through the uh, yeah, yeah, other exploit file we didn't know about, and they deleted our entire like our entire website. <laughs> but we were but we were able to fix that because I made a backup right before then because I was like I was like this is going to be ugly if I don't make a backup pretty soon. <laughs> so I did that. So I was pretty proactive in that, which was which was good. But our, our website was crippled because when I did like the CP, I did like CP star, and that didn't copy over the .ht access file. And Drupal was just like breaking when we tried to log in and stuff. And then at the and this was at the end of the day, so I didn't actually get to fix it um, by then. So then when we did like the debrief at the end of the day. The CEO comes up and is like playing like this all harsh like CEO like he's like really pissed off at one of the teams for putting up like this fake website to trick the scoring engine. He's like, if this was a real company, I'd fire you all because this doesn't make me any money at all. Yeah, he took it really, really seriously. Yeah, he took it like so seriously. It's, kind of, it's like, dude, you're the CEO. You're not the act. You're not. You're not getting directly paid. You're getting like a salary. You know, this isn't actually losing you personally any money. First of all. But so we were afraid that he was like talking about us because our site was up, it, the scoring engine reported it as up, but it was broken because he couldn't log into it. So we were really afraid that was actually We thought we had unintentionally, you know, circumvented the scoring system. Yeah, we thought we were unintentionally <laughs> cheating. And so that put us pretty, pretty far in the dumps where, you know, we we're like, well, there's just no way. I mean, if they, they might think that we're just cheating and that we're just like, whatever, you know. All right, that's it. Any last words? What's my next team? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, so if anybody's interested, I'm gonna look into the team doing some CTS. I'm not sure, I'm gonna look for some that are coming up. If there's not one coming up, we can just grab some VMs of CTF games and mess around with those. You send me an email, there's always one coming up. Okay. There's a website that lists them all. I was thinking like the weekend after this coming weekend, so everyone has time. Just take a nice break, yeah. Send me an email and I'll send you the Air Force coach. Uh, I showed you this website that basically just lists them all and you can see what's coming up. But yeah, there's always one coming up. How was the competition for you? Yeah, you know, I tried to read a lot of papers in the back room. It was not very productive. <laughs> I ended up just talking to the other coaches, which was interesting. You know, they got to do things at other schools, but it was only semi productive. I'm glad we had a good one. What was the Air Force coach like? He's a good guy. I like talking to him. They're all, you know, all the coaches were pretty, you know, they're all pretty pleasant people. Now you can have bragging rights over like six of them, right? Or, or five of them, or whatever. Just <laughs> be like, oh, we won, we beat you. Yeah, you know. We had a good time. I'm glad you guys had time. All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations.